All their anger burns through me. That much is evident. But the pain, the pain more so. And above it all, all the whispers, the voices calling, luring, until one image emerges in vivid contrast with the others. When there's a shout of joy, my eyes snap open looking for the culprit. That's when the whole room just changes. Everything is the same yet everything is not. Okay, so here I bet that if we unlocked all of the memory fragments, we would see all of them all over the pictures one by one at this precise moment. Uh, basically telling the whole story, maybe. Unfortunately, I have not found all of the pictures, so... Yeah, no big deal though. There are people everywhere laughing and dancing. I should be concerned about them, but my mind finds it easy to dismiss them as they fade in and out from nothingness. Instead, I find my concentration drawn to a man and a woman, but one can only call them a lord and a lady, going by their clothes. And oh, just see how happy the couple looks. Though, the man's eyes are eerily, eerily blank, like he's not all there. His face is familiar though. In fact, they both are, but I can't quite place why. The two make for a pretty picture as they dance in the center of the ballroom. Even the phantoms crowd's attention stay on them. It reminds me so much of Anna and I during the early days of our marriage. The only more than years, they call, they call it. We were happy then too. They smiles, our smiles, and the sunshine even with the normal dreary weather. Younger, we had less to worry about, or at least thought that way. I thought, wish we could go on that way even with all that I did and I had to do. But life as a way of catching up. There was work to be done. Although we had to stay the loving perfect couple in public, I could not afford to look so weak. We were tied down to someone else, to those who knew who I really am. I had to order my heart when I have business, but it had not always been so easy to just switch that part of me on and off. I should be concerned about their intrusion too, as what in bloody hell they are doing in my house, throwing a party as if they don't, as if they own the place. Ask myself how the fuck I did not notice what was going on before, when the parlor and the foyer are both only a few doors away. But I have, a f I have the feeling that yelling and screaming at them won't do much of anything anyway. None of the others have given me notice. I realize that this might not even be real. It dawns on me that these two are the people from the paintings. The ones all over the mansion. Yep. That's Lady Charlotte and that guy I don't know his name. And I, I guess that's Takoko. Which makes sense. I don't think I've imaginative enough to make all this up on my own. This must be a dream. Or a really uh, horrible eye. Just then, I can feel eyes on me as I contemplate the absurdity of the situation. Yet, I find difficulty in trying to tear my eyes away from the two dancing. I manage. And I regret looking away. Ah, uh, shit. The woman from the balcony stands beside me. I can hear her rattling breath, menacing and chilling. Everything in me screams to run. Something pins me to the spot as she lo just looks at me, watching and waiting. The clamor of the voices fill the bowel room, although they, such, they say such welcoming words, I do not feel comforted by the madness I am experiencing. Their joyous voices turn sinister and foreboding to my ears. The chorus of people, people that should not exist, threaten to overwhelm me, drown me even as I stand on dry land. The music still plays as the phantom quiet continues while I stand here. Vulnerable and afraid, but the dances has already ended. A 
and I'm afraid that I might just be tonight's entertainment. Tension is all well and good until products like this go down. These phantom people watch me, thousands of eyes scrutinizing, though they cheer for me return for my return. Jolly cajole me to dance and join the merriment. They're all eager hands all over, pulling me in every direction, but they do not move me enough to remove me from the woman's gaze. Listen, can you not hear them as they welcome you home? Your kind? Our kind? Our kind? No one of us, my love. We are bonded by the blood we share. If I thought the voices were overwhelming before, there's nothing compared to how they are now. The voices of loud speaking in unison and echoing ever on in the spaces of my head. They welcome me back as if I've always belonged, as if I was meant to be here in the first place. They call me all these titles and names that do not belong to me and that man's face, the one with the empty eyes flashes again before me. Once fleetingly, like a new memory I've been itself in my mind. I have to struggle for air when I come back to myself after. I'm not. This isn't. This isn't. <laughs> The welcome storms into screams at my brothers, pain and desperate pleas for my help, telling me that it is my duty to stay, telling me that I belong among them, to them. Gentle touches turn near threatening, the warning scratches and the borrowing of thieves by predators before they truly maim someone. My mouth goes dry as I struggle to speak some sense in this hallucinatory madness, but I don't get the chance that they drown out my voice. In other words, there is compulsion to stay, though my heart races in my chest, the fear I should be experiencing refuses to register in my head. Mind and body war with each other nearly tearing me in two. Oh, you finally return to us. I can't do like a monster voice, what the hell. The compulsion to walk into her arms is strong. Whispers in my head tell me to go to her. They say that she's is she is safety. She is all my art. We have been waiting for so long. But repulsed at these thoughts, I wrench away and turn with a small gasp. Without hesitation, I start to make a run for it. I nearly falter when an angry shriek pierces the air, inhumane and monstrous. <laughs> I don't dare look back, I just run, I didn't care if this is a drug and juice hallucination or not. Just run! Out of the bathroom, and out of the parlor. It's only then that I bother to look back hoping and praying the, the guard has scorned that he did not pursue me. I would have run all the way out of the mansion too, if only someone did not get in my way. Oh, did we just meet uh, Ashton? I collide with a body much larger than mine and fall back to the ground, head spinning as I look up at the stained glass. Turning my head to the side replaces a colorful side with a pair of shiny black shoes. The TIG fills every inch of my being then, making me refuse to get up. Meanwhile, a familiar head of ginger air looks down at me in amusement. You really must look where you're going if you insist on running about. Do tell, where is the fire? Ah, oh, thank God you're here! <gasps> thank God! I do hope you don't have a concussion. Can you count backwards from 15 to 1 for me? No, but there is a ghost chasing me! Oh, fuck off, you wanker! Just help me up! I do not think insulting me if you do have a concussion is a smart decision. <laughs> but no, really. 15 to 1. God damn it. That woman... She was here! I told you to keep an eye out for her! The other man offers an arm and pulls me up to my feet then. But before I can storm off and pull him to the ballroom, he anchors me down with one hand and my shoulder and the other touching the back of my head. No bruising or bump. 
that still does not mean that you don't have a concussion. If you are too lazy to count backwards, can you tell me your full name? Where are you currently? We don't have <sighs> Lucille Mitchell Wright, and this is the Ermine God bloody fucking foyer. Such a bad name, though. <laughs> Lucille Mitchell Wright, wow. But we don't have time for this. You must make and have the time to make sure you are not broken in the head. I have already sent security to scour the whole house when I saw you running out of the parlor, Doomkopf. If the woman is here, they will have her. You will only be slowing them down if you plan to interfere. No, they won't because it's a goddamn ghost. When he points that out, I realize that there are guards starting to filter the, into the house as we speak, with some already searching the nearby rooms. Arm and uniform men go about in pairs, making it so that the house is in a flurry of activity. Let's go with me then, with the knowledge that I'm not going to kill over anytime soon. I was hoping that you would be tired from dealing with the young miss on my return. Instead, you come running and hit your head. Such a troublesome boy. Shall I be carrying you to bed too? I can manage just fine on my own. Though I don't see how I can sleep until that woman is caught. It'll be easier to keep you safe in your quarters. This is twice we've known the woman to break in. I think we can safely presume that you hold her interest. He says it as a matter of fact in a tone that broke no argument. Not like I'll argue if it means I'm kept safe. To a restaurant upstairs, though we remain watchful or wary of any potential threats to my person. We make it to the master bedroom without any trouble, though, and the two of the security guard are left outside the door. No problems at all. But until we get inside. Ren's eyes scan the room wildly, a look of dread on his usually stoic face. And I don't understand for a moment. Looking around the red room the bedroom, it's empty. Then I realized. Where's Hana? She came home with you from the hospital, didn't she? She's supposed to be here. I sent one of the maids to accompany her here to let her rest. I feel the color drain from my face when he raise, raises a uh, hand to stop me from charging out there. Stay. I'm not staying in here while Hana stays out there. One of the guards will find her and bring her here. And what if they don't? What if that woman gets to her first? What if she already has her? That's not possible. You can't promise that. There's no second thought as I reach under my side of the bed and pull out, pull out one of my knives. I have no doubt that the other man can take me on if we are both unarmed. With this, I can even the field, or at least deter him from escalating the situation and risking hurting either of us. I'm going out there to look for Hana. And you're either with me or you aren't. I'm not risking Hana, and I'm not leaving her alone. Still like a stubborn mule, he refuses to budge from the door. There's a withering look on him that I try to match. One that somehow I am losing fast to, even with him not saying a word yet. Can you see yourself in the mirror right now? You are in no proper state to go looking for anyone. If it'll make you happy, I will do the looking. But please, and don't make me repeat this, stay where it's safe, where security can find you. We already have one person to be worried about. Please don't add another one to it. Perhaps it is his tone. In spite of his general disdain of for virtually everything that has to do with me, I'd like to think that over the years he has grown to care for Anna at least. Much as I loathe to admit this, I trust him with her safety over any servant in this house. So, an equisis. You have two hours, Shuriken. I don't think it'll take that long to find one missing woman in this house. Two hours. Any more than that, and I'm going out there. Two hours? Of course. Despite his words, he lingers. And if I did not know any better, I'd say he wants to make sure I'd get in a damn bed and sleep for before he turns away from me. What am I, a child? Watching me and treating me like one. That's the reason why we will never get along. Well, what are you waiting for? And the knife? The knife stays. Very well. Only then does he seem to get the end. The nod leaves, locks and closes the door behind me. 
behind him. For a moment, I 